Hello everyone, this is Stepan and welcome to Hanging Pawns. Round 5 of the Candidates tournament brought way more solid games than yesterday's round and players, with one exception though, seem to have opted for engine approved lines and for openings preferred by engines and especially influenced by the recent Alpha Zero Stockfish match in which Alpha Zero clearly favored Catalan positions, which have proven to be solid engine wise anyway. This is the encounter between the tournament leader, Fabiar Fabiano Caruana, who has three uh, points up to the first four rounds so far, and Sergei Karyakin, who hasn't been doing that well, and he's currently sharing last place with only one point so far, with two draws. Caruana had white pieces, and he opened with pawn to d4, which seems to be the most often uh, first move of the tournament, and Karyakin goes for the, for the most common reply, knight to f6. We have c4, e6 g3 and d5, challenging white central structure, and they've entered the hybrid position, a strange queen's gambit declined and Catalan hybrid, and after bishop to g2, bishop e7, and knight f3, this is now a closed Catalan position, but some annotators may also qualify it as d30, which is queen's gambit declined without knight c3 interposed. And in this position uh, we have castles, uh, by black, uh, and Caruana plays a bad move positionally now, uh, immediately giving Karyakin the lead. He plays a somewhat logical maneuver, defending his c pawn, but losing precious time for development. What he should have played here was either c takes d, so that the pawn wouldn't need defending anyway, or castles, or knight, knight to c3, developing a piece. Instead, he plays queen to b3, giving Sergei time to strike in the center energetically with c5 which would mean a slight advantage for black already, which is quite bad on move 6, if you are a professional. But Karyakin plays a much more passive and defensive move, instead he plays the solid c6. And this gives up an opportunity uh, to become better in the, in the game, in the position, and justifies Caruana's mistake. C has, uh, c6 has given Caruana back the advantage, and positionally he now stands a lot better. c6 is just a waste of time in this position. He could have played c5 and opened uh, up lines for his pieces energetically, especially for the light square bishop still stuck on c8. And this way he's going to have to work harder to develop. Perhaps the inaccurate queen b3 was Fabiano's preparation, and he knew it wasn't good, but he counted on Karyakin to make a mistake in, in response. Who knows? Anyway, the game continues with castles by Fabiano. We have d takes c4, another major inaccuracy by Sergei. It captures away from the center and lets Caruana keep his central pawn structure and the possibility to strike with e4 once the pawn is defended sufficiently. So definitely not a smart idea in this exact position, even though it's it's played in some uh, Queen's Gambit decline lines and Slav positions. Queen takes, of course, and now b5, gaining a tempo, Queen to c2, and Bishop to b7 by Karyakin. And notice how useful it would have been had he played c5 instead of c6. The Bishop would have been active already along the long diagonal. Uh, knight b to d2 developing, and c5, now wasting a whole tempo to open up the Bishop. d takes c5. And this c5 was, of course, a pawn sacrifice by uh, by Sergei. Knight to a6, attacking the pawn twice now, and Caruana defends with knight to b3, holding on to his extra c pawn, regardless of how weak it really is and useless, actually. Bishop to e4, gaining a tempo on the queen. Queen goes to c3, still defending c4, of course. Rook to c8, putting even more pressure on c5. I'm sorry, not c4. Bishop to e3, defending once more, and knight d5, now forcibly removing one of the defenders. Uh, Caruana responds with queen to d2, and we have a couple of exchanges. Bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, knight takes c3, removing the dark squared bishop, the defender of c5, queen takes c3, and now Sergei can finally regain his pawn, he plays knight takes. And after knight takes, bishop takes, queen retreats to b3, attacking b5, and Karyakin defends with queen to b6. And now Caruana plays a safe move, e3, making sure that there isn't any chance for black to strike at the weak f2 square. And we have bishop to e7 by Karyakin, a high class move, guarding the imported d8 square and preventing any possible infiltration by white's rooks, which were likely to happen had he not played it. And the position has now become completely equal, and it's starting to look more and more drawish, which must be hard on both players. Caruana would have surely wanted to continue his winning streak after his marvelous win yesterday, and he would want to stay in clear first, and Karyakin definitely wants to pick himself up and at least have a chance at, at, at the title since he is now in last place, and he still didn't win any games, by the way. Uh, the game continues for a while, though, with rook f to d1, 
Rook to c7, both players develop their rooks and actually initiate exchanges. Rook a to c1, rook f to c8, and now Caravana has to capture. He takes on c7, rook takes on c7, of course, not the queen. King to g2, g6, rook to d2, uh, guarding the second rank. King to g7 by black, both players ensure their, their kings are safe, completely safe. There is really not much to play for for either side, no real prospects in the position or attacking chances, actually. And the game soon concludes, we have rook to c2. Rook takes, queen takes, queen to c5, even initiating the queen exchange. Queen takes, bishop takes, and b3, making sure that his pawns are not on the same uh, color squares as the opponent's bishop, so that they can't be attacked. e5, a4, b takes, b takes, and here they agree the draw. It seems to be the most likely result, uh, result anyway, since they chose to play the opening, which is currently considered to be the absolute best engine-wise, which of course means that all top-level players, and especially Super GMs playing in the candidates, know it in detail and understand it by heart, and that they've used supercomputers to get to know it perfectly, so they should have expected such a result. I mean, it's not likely that somebody will blunder a position which they anal analyzed with the computer for months. Surely a disappointment for both players, but tomorrow is another day, and let's, uh, let's hope they will play more aggressively and be more eager to win than today. Okay everybody, thanks very much for watching, I hope you got something from this game. If you like the video and want to see more chess analysis and games from the candidates tournament, please consider subscribing and see you soon. Cheers, bye!